Hey, how you doing? So I've been super depressed, like listening to Nirvana in a dark red room all day kind of depressed. I think a lot of you know the feeling though, and I find peace in that. The ups, the downs we all feel, the connectedness, the scarves of pain and of joy that keep us warm when we are so very cold. It's something we can share. Maybe that's why I find this weird comfort in Batman. When I'm low, I often find myself writing about Batman, writing for Batman, writing Batman fan fiction. I've been rereading a lot of Tom King's run, which asks this question of can Bruce Wayne love? Can Bruce Wayne be happy? Can he let go of some of that trauma, that darkness, that pain, and still be the Batman? Which got me thinking, hey, maybe I should make a video on how hyped I am for the Batman. Now this, this right here looks like a fucking film. But first, I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's rant, Raycon. These bad boys offer eight hours of playtime, a 32 hour battery life, and a lifetime of sex appeal. You can get fire audio quality at half the price of other premium brands. Raycon's everyday earbuds look, feel, and sound better than ever. They have this rubber oil look that has a nice smooth feel to them, yet offers a fantastic grip. They come with a variety of gel tips, so you're sure to find the perfect, comfortable fit for your ears. These things will will not budge, man. Trust me. I ran around these streets looking like an emo Bruce Wayne, went to Target, got slapped in the face, landed in the sheets, possibly lost a tooth, and they still didn't come out. So whether I'm working out, frying fish, or having an existential crisis, these things come with me. It's no wonder Raycon's everyday earbuds have over 48,000 five-star reviews. Right now, click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com slash high top and get 15% off your Raycon purchase. You'll be supporting my channel and improving your earbud game at the same time. It's a win-win. Thanks, guys. The first thing that strikes me that so gloriously beats me down about the Batman is that it looks like a movie. Duh, it is a movie. But too many of these caped outings don't look like films. They look like SNL skits. I'm sorry, but it's true. Shot for coverage, made in previs, and churned out for a release date. Now, does that make the stories, the emotions we feel lesser? Depends on who you ask, man. For me, too often the visual blandness, the sameness, the lack of expressiveness actively takes me out of the story. I've got a lot of shit for saying that in the past liking a film less because of its seemingly lack of care in the visual storytelling department. But for others, it might not bother them a bit. But does having a distinct look, feel, and craft behind your cape make these icons feel grander, feel more iconic, feel more cinematic? Yes. Do the Batman trailers single-handedly look more stylized, more filled with voice, purpose, and direction than 90% of modern destined to be box office hits? Yes. You don't don't need me to tell you that. Just look. But why? It's really simple. Shots are framed on set, not found in the editing room. Costumes are built, handmade, conceived and executed by artists, and then not covered up in CG. This was also filmed largely during a pandemic, but you would never be able to tell. There's actual people, a large amount of extras, human beings that make the threat feel more tangible, make the film feel more tangible. Gotham from the looks of it finally feels like Gotham again. Not Chicago, not Detroit, nor my hometown of Pittsburgh. Remember when Nolan had this really distinct Blade Runner look for the Narrows? Or when Tim Burton and Anton first created a gothic German expressionist inspired distorted nightmare. I'm overjoyed that we are somewhat moving back to that. Every shot we've seen of this towering metropolis of depravity and filth makes me feel like I need a shower, which is fucking perfect, man. Rain assaults the orange hues of the deep dark night, unable to stop the fires of corruption and anger that fuel this cesspool. A lone warrior watches the sun rise over his city. How could one man possibly win the war against such apathy and injustice? The Batman cost $100 million, which is half, if not one third, the usual cape shit budget. Maybe less studio money allows you to do more. Maybe cinematographer Greg Fraser is just a king. Oh, <laughs> I've been summoned. You say Greg Fraser three times in a YouTube video and boom, I appear because god fucking damn, look at this thing, look at it! Greg rolled right on over from Mando and June into this and just went 
all in. He took the world of Matt's new Kurt Cobain Bruce Wayne and drenched it in a new kind of Dark Knight darkness. I mean, we've seen Batman go dark before, but never like this. This isn't just playing into the dark and gritty buzzwords that get every tween edgelord's rocks off. This is proper grim and oppressive. It's not just a frame sunk into 90% shadow. This is a real deal 239 anamorphic ratio that hangs so heavy it feels like the walls are closing in. Look at how your focus constricts around the center, the way your eyes sit shallow on the subject and all the rest falls away. It's an approach more moonlight than Marvel, but pushed into a darkness so true that the waxy and greasy and grimy lensing evokes genuine sinister dread. And when you go that dark, woo, color pops. I mean, look at those oranges and reds here. They outright explode because there's actual contrast actual contrast. And one more thing, one more thing. Look at how the camera is quietly creeping in and out of every shot. The walls are closing in. That's fucking cinema, baby. That's it. The sheer level of texture in every frame is just I'm watching something that has an actual look, like the people behind it made actual choices to achieve an actual vision. And I need it now. Thanks, Bailey. Or maybe Matt Reeves has a vision that's not to be trifled with. My boy Matt has made banger after banger, if you ask me. The first Cloverfield is artful found footage, changing the name and the game of the genre. Let Me In is a perfect display of how committed he is to his tone, never shying away from the brutality and cruelness a child can face. A twisted tale of two broken kids in a frigid, isolating winter wonderland. And his two Planet of the Apes flicks are some of the ballsiest, most complex, moving blockbusters of the last 20 years. He's a legend, always a pathos-filled legend, never afraid to look into the darkness of a soul, of humanity, without ever glamorizing or glorifying that darkness. Always focused on putting us into the world, putting us directly into the mind of his characters. Subjective filmmaking is kind of dead in superhero movies. Point of view driven narratives are far too rare in this genre when you consider the fact that 90% of comics are completely driven by the thoughts, the feelings, the perspective of the lead character. Batman has always been more tangible, more relatable, more moving when we can read, when we can hear his thoughts on the madness, the demons he faces, when we can feel his pain through his lens. And Matt Reeves is the first to go all in on that. I can't describe to you how hype this makes me. Give me scenes like this. But I'd rather die than wait another hour. I've already waited 18 years. Show me how mentally unstable Bruce Wayne is. Show me how he views the world, how he views himself. Give me that sweet, sweet noir narration where Gotham is one giant powder keg. Brothers to match. That's something I've always wanted to see depicted on film, and it's a story being told by some of the most interesting and unique storytellers working today. Robert Pattinson has always been a perfect pick for Batman. I really can't understand why anyone would still be against him as Batman. To me, he looks the most Batman. To me, just from the trailers, he looks like THE Batman. I love how the deep contrast of the cowl, the heavy contrast of the film, allows us to really see his eyes. Every frame in the mask, out of the mask, with the black makeup smeared on his face, draws our attention directly to to them, which is wonderful. We've all at one point or another clamored to get the white eyes in live action, but when your lead actor can express shame, realization of blame, and about 30 other complex emotions with not a single line of dialogue and just his eyes, you'd be a fool to cover those up. Paul Dano is the Riddler? Fuck me, dude. Establishing Selena early on in this franchise? Hell yeah, man. Give me that Bat-Cat romance of shared longing. Give me the two broken puzzle pieces with differing ideologies that fit each other perfectly, that give each other something the other one desperately needs. A film featuring the world's greatest detective actually being a dark detective mystery that's committed to that tone, that has levity come 
from within character and not from the current focus-tested taste and sense of humor of the modern audience that wants you to get on board with what it's doing or get the hell out of the way, what more could you want? The Batman looks to be entirely about the Batman, which should be a given, right? But sadly, that sometimes isn't the case. I've said this again and again, but too often, specifically in Batman's live-action crusades, his story, his self, is overshadowed by the villains. But by putting us directly into Bruce's head, by taking a look at how broken someone has to be to find solace in breaking the faces of those he deems evil, and not by any means pulling any punches. <laughs> We are seeing something we've never seen on the big screen before. A Batman film where a young Bruce Wayne isn't all good, where Batman isn't the answer to pain, but a continuance of that pain, of the cycle of violence that made him, that forced him to exist. You can tell from the way he screams as his muscle car bursts through the fire, the way he recklessly walks through the waves of bullets, the way he deals with those less fortunate than him, those he deems as irredeemable. The violence he inflicts, it's personal, not selfless. His heroism isn't all good, it isn't black and white, it's rather gray. He has a lot of healing to do, a lot of empathy left to discover, a lot of anger to let go of. When I'm low, and I've been feeling pretty low, Bruce often pushes me to turn pain, the pain that often feels like it will never end, into something that can inspire hope. And I have a sneaking suspicion that the Batman will be about that in some ways, be about starting with soul-shattering tragedy, responding with bone-crushing violence, and slowly transforming that vengeance into hope and into heroism. Will Bruce Wayne ever find true peace? It's doubtful. That's the nature of the character, to suffer, to somewhat recover, and to do it all over again. But seeing a film that has been marketed, spoken about, pitched as a highly subjective character study of Bruce Wayne, a film where Bruce narrates, where we are in his mind, where we stick with his point of view, where we hopefully feel and see the trauma that he keeps fighting through, the pain he will always be running into, that is something that makes me excited for the future. Because a lot of us are fighting that same battle with ourselves. Most of us don't beat up muggers or dress up as a terrifying creature of the night or have like a gazillion dollars, but all of us can relate in some ways to working through our pain. The isolation of feeling like a lone child screaming into the night, the struggle of standing back up, of even getting up, and the often impossible task that's demanded of us, the expectation that we will continue to keep on fighting no matter what we suffer. That's the war Bruce Wayne wages, not his war on crime, but the war within himself. Reading that struggle on the page, seeing that battle on the screen, witnessing him never give up that fight, that's what makes the character, the Batman, ever enduring. And truth is, that's a part of the reason I endure. Truth is, that's a part of the reason I'm still here. Hey guys, don't usually pop in after that final line, but just wanted to apologize for the lack of the longer videos. I could make a ton of excuses, but truth is, I wasn't bullshitting. I've been kind of depressed, kind of stressed, and putting on the mask, the high top films, can sometimes be daunting, be haunting. I thank you endlessly for your endless support. I truly would not be here today without all of your love. Oh, and I'm working on a Jason Todd fan series. Here's a quick teaser for the teaser. <laughs>